What's up, YouTube? So have you guys watched Normani's video, Motivation? If you're watching this video, then you probably have. But if you haven't, go watch that video, then come back and watch this video, okay? But yeah, I'm going to talk about Normani's video for her song, Motivation, and as well, bring it back to a perspective of, you know, black women, dark skin, brown skin, black women, colorism, the music industry, and all that good stuff, too. All right, so when I first saw this video on YouTube, I was like, huh, okay, that's interesting. Um, but then I saw, like, folks doing reactions to it, especially, like, celebrities doing reactions to it. So I was like, oh, hmm, maybe I should watch this video then. Okay, so I watched the video, and I'm like, whoa. Because <laughs> I'm like, you know, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> you know, Normani, she came with the dance moves, the beauty, the sex appeal. You know, she came with a lot in this video. Yeah. And as well, the video is supposed to be sort of like an homage or a tribute to sort of like early 2000s, perhaps late 90s as well, maybe. But, you know, early 2000s um, as far as like music is concerned right so there was a lot of you know tributes and homages paid within the video and the thing is they're sort of debatable which is good because it causes people to have discussions conversations debates arguments you know which is good because it keeps people talking and that's what you want people to do when you you know release art you know you want people to talk about it right you want it to spark conversation so you know mission accomplished for Normani and her team because a lot of people are saying oh well she's paying tribute to this musical artist no she's paying tribute to this musical artist no it's not that musical artist it's this one. Oh no she's on the fence that means she's paying tribute to this musical <laughs> you know it's like a lot of different things going on right <clears throat> but one musical artist I think we can all agree on that she's paying tribute to is Beyonce alright like pretty much from the beginning of the song in the music video when she first comes on the scene um, not in her um, you know flashback to you know her childhood days but when she was walking down the street right so I was like oh yep yeah, that's Beyonce and let's talk about these Beyonce comparisons alright so obviously Normani you know was influenced by Beyonce Nothing wrong with that. A lot of um, folks are influenced by Beyonce, you know, especially like um, black female artists are influenced by Beyonce. Um, and that's partially because Beyonce is like, as far as like black females are concerned, she is the most accessible, the most famous, the most pushed in the media. So, you know, it's not out of the left field or out of the ordinary or something weird that Normani would be influenced by Beyonce and possibly Destiny's Child as well. Um, I'm pretty sure she probably has seen some of the, uh, you know, Destiny's Child music videos and whatnot too. Um, but I think Normani was born in like 96, so she probably was coming toward the end probably toward like the beginning of Beyonce's solo career perhaps maybe that's when she got in I don't know um, but definitely I see the Beyonce influence there right <clears throat> and again um, I don't knock Normani for having Beyonce as an influence uh, but I do kind of feel like that is one thing that perhaps is holding her back and that happens to a lot of female artists as well as just artists in general, like the comparisons, right? We always are comparing people to each other, right? Especially when people are similar, right? And the thing is, I think with the Beyonce comparison, I think partially what's holding her back is that Beyonce is still relevant in today's music scene. So she's, in a sense, 
almost being compared to Beyonce as if she is Beyonce's contemporary. Like, her and Beyonce are on the same exact level, you know, as far as, like, um, their experience within the music industry, you know, how much, you know, how many years they've been in the music industry, which that's not true, definitely not true, you know. Beyonce helped pave the way for, you know, women like Normani, right? And Normani's helping pave the way for the next generation that's coming after her, right? <clears throat> um, but I feel like people are making comparisons like that because Beyonce is still relevant to today's music scene versus if this was like, say, if Normani was pulling more so from Janet Jackson, it would be a little different, I think, because Janet Jackson, you know, while she is, you know, legendary, iconic, you know, pretty much paved the way for the showgirl lane, you know, the um, dancers um, who sing fast paced songs, you know, the performer type of um, musical artist, right? Um, so while she has done all that, she, again, she's not relevant to, the, to today's music scene, though. So I think that partially is behind it. Plus, you know, the media always likes to pit people against each other. You know, it does make for, you know, interesting events and whatnot, <laughs> you know. You know, it makes for interesting news stories, right? Um, so I think for Normani... She just has to be able to draw from her musical influences, but just make it more so her own, right? <clears throat> and I just think that, you know, she's still in the early phases of her solo music career, so she still perhaps is trying to find, like, her niche and her style, like her signature style, you know, that signature stamp that like bam you know like whoa that's normani right there right <clears throat> and you know um a lot of black women especially brown skin and dark skin and black women you know they're riding for normani hoping that she could be you know the great chocolate hope that you know the dark skin and brown skin girls have been waiting for you know to become that big you know international megastar you know, repping for, you know, the brown skin, dark skin girls, right? And there's nothing wrong with that, you know? Um, but the thing is with that, um, I think that brown skin and dark skin black women, I think they have to ask themselves, are they sure they want Normani to be this? You know, do they want Normani to be strictly a hip hop R and B artist, or do they want her to be like a crossover artist, right? And if she is to be a crossover artist, then she's going to have to go into the pop lane. You know, she may not have to fully abandon her R and B hip hop lane, but she would have to go into the pop lane. Would you be willing to support Normani going into the pop lane? You know, because a lot of times they're like, well, you know, I, you know, folks kind of have a particular genre of music that they like, which is, you know, completely fine, but it may not be the genre of music that appeals to you, say pop, you know? <clears throat> Again, just putting that out there, too. So, I heard something thrown around also that, you know, Normani is what Kelly Rowland should have been. Interesting. But by the way, doesn't Kelly Rowland have a song called Motivation 2? That's when I, I was like, because I was thinking about that too. I was like, well, doesn't Kelly Rowland have a song similar to this called Motivation? You know? And the people who were a part of this song, as far as like the songwriting process, um, Normani was one. Um, Ariana Grande was another person, a part of the songwriting process. Um, I'm not sure if Ariana Grande, like, specifically said, okay, you know, we're going to, I'm going to sit down and help Normani write a song, or either it was a song that, you know, Ariana Grande wrote on, but then was like, well, I don't want to record this song, or well, I don't want to release this song. I don't know exactly. And another person 
who is very famous, um, who was involved in this songwriting process, was Max Martin. Some of you may know Max Martin, some of you may not know Max Martin. But if you don't, I'll let you know who he is. You probably at least have heard some of his songs. All right. Max Martin was the man who was writing, you remember back in like the late 90s, early 2000s, when like, you know, the Black, the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and Britney Spears were like the big thing. He was the one writing their songs, right? And he has like a ton of songwriting credits besides those as well. So he was a part of this process too. So it's like, hmm. And for me personally, I think, you know, the song is cute. Um, but I kind of feel like it ain't, it ain't like got that like catchy type of vibe where you like, I want to hear this song again. And it's like really catchy and you're like, okay, replay. <laughs> I don't think it's, the song is quite there. I feel like the music video is kind of there. It's like, okay, let's see the music video again. Cause the music video, you know, it kind of got you talking as you know, especially when it comes to like, you know, the backflips and, you know, the basketball scene. You're like, whoa, how she's doing that? You know, it's, again, it's getting you talking, right? It's making conversation, discussion, debates, arguments. Because some people are saying it's CGI. And it's like, okay, you know, because <clears throat> when I first saw it, I was like, it didn't seem CGI, but then again, it does seem like really perfect, so it probably was CGI, but, you know, whatever. Then some people were saying, you know, was Normani using a stunt double for, you know, the uh, flip she, would do, she was doing, you know? That happens, too. Um, <clears throat> then some people are saying, like, no, you know, Normani, uh, you know, she's a trained gymnast and whatnot. So, again, debate, discussions, you know conversation that's what you want right it causes and creates buzz about an artist so yes that's good that's a good thing you know i know some of the stands for normani is not like you know she's perfect she didn't use a stunt double she did everything herself she did everything by herself for herself for the dark skin brown skin sisters <laughs> you know and that's what's up and some people are saying, like, you know, the brown skin, dark skin sisters are being a, a, maybe a bit extra, perhaps, you know, perhaps. But then again, some people who are, you know, not fans of Normani can be considered being a bit extra and doing a bit much, too, you know. So it can kind of go both ways. Let's be real. All right. So, again, the song itself is okay. It's nice, but it's not catchy enough, in my opinion. It doesn't have that, you know, replay value. I don't think it's, it's not, again, it's not terrible. It's just, it just didn't quite hit the target for it to be like a breakout song, right? Like that song that really hits the mark and really gets the ball rolling for a musical artist's career. I don't think it was quite at that level, right? But, but, you know, considering that this video, you know, this music video is really popular, it's gotten probably like at least 12 million views in the last two days, which is pretty good, especially for um, a debut single. Is this, would this be considered a debut single? Or would Waves be the, considered a debut single? I don't know. Well, it's way better than Waves, that bullshit. Um, so, you know, it's a step in the right direction for Nomani. That's what's up. <clears throat> you know, it's definitely causing me, you know, to definitely keep even more tabs on Normani. Like, okay, what else, like, what else she got up her sleeve? What else she gonna do next? Like, you know, what's next for Normani, right? Again, that's what's up. All right. Um, uh, let's see. I guess we can talk about some of the tributes in the video. It was like, the tributes were all over the place. You know, according to people, right? Because some people are saying, oh, this artist is getting tribute. No, this artist is getting tribute. No, this one is. It's this one. It's that one. This, that, and the mother third, all right? <clears throat> so, I think we can all agree that Beyonce got the tribute. 
you know, overall, I think we can all say that Beyonce was um, paid tribute. I don't think there's much debate about that, right? Um, people said that Sierra was paid tribute. Um, I can kind of see that, you know, a little bit too. <clears throat> Especially when it was like kind of like dancing outside the house, doing like the low key one two step movement a little bit, you know. Um, some people said Jennifer Lopez got a paid tribute, and I can see that one too. Where it's like you know they, you know, in that like hooded, covered area with like the basketball uh, goals and um, whatnot. I can kind of see that, you know, it paying tribute, and you know referencing the I'm Real video with Ja Rule and J-Lo, Jennifer Lopez. I could see that. Um, Usher, some people said that Usher was paid tribute in the video. And I think it was because of like the um, the same area that J-Lo was in. Not, well, the same area that kind of looked like it referenced the J-Lo I'm Real music video. Um, and possibly, I don't know, um, there were some other things, too. Um, or Marion. And I can definitely see that with the whole um, Normani and that um, her dancer, her they had like a solo dance together when it was just them and they were dancing on the street. And it was very similar to Marion's video um, for his song, Touch. I was like, yeah, that does look like that video. So that could be, you know, paying tribute to that, too. Some people felt like Aaliyah was paid tribute at the end with, like, you know, kind of like the black on. I think it might have been leather, too. And it did kind of look like some dance moves that Aaliyah would do. All right. <clears throat> and, you know, it was a lot of other tributes paid, too. Um, some of them... I feel like some are debatable while others are less debatable where it's like, okay, I can see that. But then it's like, oh, no, I don't know about that. Um, <clears throat> some people said maybe Ashanti may have got paid tribute uh, with like the raining scene. Perhaps, you know, because Ashanti had a song called Rain On Me. You know, uh, some people said that Maya may have gotten a uh, paid tribute to. Um, some people said Khalees may have got paid tribute to. Uh, because of like the fence scene. I'm like, oh, well, you know, for her video for Milkshake. I'm like, oh, well, possibly, you know. <clears throat> Some people felt like the fence scene may have referenced um, Iggy Azalea, you know. Which some people may be like, eh, but I can kind of see where folks may be coming from with that. I may, I kind of think that may have just been like a happy accident. Um, but perhaps. And then some people felt like um, that scene, as well as like the flips, may have been referencing Britney Spears, which I'm like, okay, I can kind of see that, you know, um, old school, you know, baby one more time, you know, I can kind of see that happening too, you know, not necessarily with the fence, but kind of like the whole school setting. I think there was like a in that fence area, it kind of seemed like it may have taken place on a school campus, perhaps. Um, and as well with the flips, I kind of, when I saw that, I did kind of think of Britney Spears with the flips. <clears throat> but personally, I think that the fence scene was really paying tribute to Vega from Street Fighter. Y'all ever play Street Fighter when um, you have to fight Vega at his stage and he can climb on the fence? It was referencing um, Street Fighter, a Vega from Street Fighter. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know Normani was into Street Fighter like that. So that's what's up. You know. uh, but again, it's debatable, though. It's debatable, though. You know, which is good. It's causing conversation, right? Because um, I did see some comments in the section. I'm like, come on, y'all, calm down. It ain't that serious now. Because this one chick was going in, going crazy. <laughs> like, no, it was this, not this. I'm like, calm down, sister. It ain't that serious now. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but one more thing I want to talk about. Um, probably say some people may have felt like the video may have been a little bit too sexy, perhaps. And I can kind of see where they were coming from with that when it was maybe like, 
I'd say maybe, I can understand maybe the outfit, maybe perhaps being a bit too revealing. Maybe, you know, the rain scene, you know, maybe harking back to like, you know, some type, some sort of a, you know, striptease routine or some sort. So I can understand that. Um, and I do feel, and I don't know, you know, in today's music scene, what this really help considering that today's music scene is a bit different from the previous music scene and you know music industry um, but you know it's very much pacing pacing you know all good stories require pacing properly paced right you can't give up the whole story all at once you gotta pace it out right you know and the same thing with Normani, right? She can't give up everything all at once. She should pace it out. But maybe the music scene is a bit different now. The music industry is a little bit different now, right? <clears throat> but, you know, again, you know, the women especially, y'all know, y'all can't, again, y'all know how y'all act. You can't give up everything all at once. You got to pace it out, right? Just like any, you know, very successful female adult film star knows you can't do everything all at once. You gotta pace out your career, you know? You know, first it's anal, swallowing, game bangs, black guys, you know, right? <clears throat> so, with all that being said, pacing. I think that, you know, Normani and her team well, at this point, can she really flip back to time? You know, flip back? I don't know. So it may be a little bit different for Normani. She may not be able to do the pacing since, you know, she, I don't know if she can really go down the, you know, I'm innocent, you know, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, you know, I'm not innocent. Lane, you know, where it's like, the, hmm, you know. Because <clears throat> like Janet Jackson did that at one point, right? Uh, Britney Spears also did that at one point, too. Um, so, she, again, Normani might not be able to do that lane, but, you know, I'm sure Normani can find her lane at one point or another, right? I think that she just really needs to get some bops, you know? That's the thing. I think that it ain't really a matter of talent. I think Normani has the talent, you know, the look, you know, the waist size and all that good stuff, right? Um, I think it may just be a matter of getting some good musical bops, right? Because, like, Camila Cabello, you know, I don't really fuck with Camila Cabello because she's, like, a racist. Uh, but, you know, she got some bops. So when I'm going to listen to the radio and her song comes on, I'm like, you know, damn, I got to turn the song, <laughs> turn it down. You know, I would like to listen to this song, but I can't be supporting no racist ass. You know what, right? Um... And I think that Normani probably could, you know, dance and sing circles around Camila Cabello. But the thing is, Camila Cabello got the bops, though, you know. Um, <clears throat> and I kind of feel like it's sort of like that with, like, Rihanna and Beyonce, you know. Like, Rihanna, she got the bops, right? Really, you know, because Rihanna went through that thing, too, when she was being compared to Beyonce, too, right? She went through that, too. And that could have messed up her career. But her and her team pretty much turned Rihanna into like the anti-Beyonce. You know. You know, people criticize Rihanna's uh, vocal skills <clears throat> and performance skills. But, you know, I will say that Rihanna is creative. And she can sort of get away with doing certain things that are a bit edgy and making it work for her and as well she has good songs you know Rihanna does hit the number one spot a lot like she has like a lot of number one hit songs and you know her songs are different you know <clears throat> so you know I know folks who do you know they prefer their singers to, you know, be, you know, the vocalist, you know, like really vocally talented. But they do like Rihanna because, you know, Rihanna does have some good songs, right? So, you know, 
perhaps Normani can maybe, you know, take a cue from Rihanna in that regard, you know, as far as like getting songs that really work for her, right? Getting songs that are really catchy, um, really original, and really different, right? But can still sell, right? Because it's like original, then too original, right? Because it has to sell. So it's a bit of a difficult thing to happen to deal with, but I feel like Normani can manage. I think like she has pretty much everything she needs to manage as far as like herself is concerned. Now her team on the other hand, perhaps not, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, um, she just, I feel like at this point, it's just the song. She needs that hit song, that signature hit song that really gets the ball rolling, right? But, you know, she has created some buzz, and that's, you know, that's um, that helps to get the ball rolling. So, let's see what's next for Normani, y'all. Let's see what's next for her. Let's see what else she got up her sleeve. Is she a one-trick pony? Or is she the real deal that's going to stand the test of time? We'll see. But that's all I got to say for the, this video. So, thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Until the next video, adios and goodbye for now. As well, yo, know, please let me know what you think, you know, in general, but especially about the tributes and the homages and the video and all that good stuff. But again, thanks for watching. Adios and goodbye for now.